This presentation is brought to you by the Latino Policy Forum. We work to improve education, advocate for affordable housing, promote just immigration policies, and strengthen communities through leadership. Welcome to What Immigrant Families Need to Know About the Public Charge, presented by Sara Cartagena, Immigration Analyst at the Latino Policy Forum. During this presentation, we will answer the following questions. What exactly is the public charge test? Who does it affect and who does it not affect? What does the public charge test consist of? And what resources are available? We hope that by the end of this presentation, you will have a better understanding of the public charge rule and will be able to make informed decisions for you and your family. Let's start with our first question. What is the public charge rule? The public charge rule is part of a screening process administered by U.S. immigration officials. The screening or test is to see if a person is likely in the future to use certain public benefits. If the person is found to be likely to use certain public benefits in the future, they could be denied entry to the U.S. or denied a green card. Now, when is the public charge test administered? It is administered when certain immigrants apply to enter the United States, or when changing or extending certain non-immigrant visas, or, most commonly, when a person is seeking to become a lawful permanent resident, also known as a green card holder, or when a person who already is a lawful permanent resident re-enters the U.S. after spending 180 days consecutively abroad. But not all immigrants who are applying for a green card are subject to the public charge. So, who does the public charge not affect? The public charge does not affect lawful permanent residents or green card holders applying for citizenship, refugees and asylees, U visa applicants or holders, special immigrant juveniles, certain parolees and humanitarian visas holders, citizens, naturalized citizens, T visa applicants or holders, VAWA self-petitioners, and others. As you can see, many different immigrant statuses are not subject to the public charge test. So, who does the public charge affect? The public charge is most likely to affect individuals who are applying for a green card through a family-based petition. For example, a person adjusting their status through marriage. Now that we know who is subject to the public charge test, what does it consist of? The public charge test consists of an evaluation called the totality of circumstances, where immigration officials consider and balance various factors, such as a person's income and financial status. This includes assets, liabilities, debt, such as loans, your credit score, and if you have ever used any of the specified public benefits. They will also look at the person's age, whether they are what they consider working age, for example, between the ages of 18 and 61 years is a positive factor. They will look at the person's education level and skills. If you have any special occupational skills or certifications and your English proficiency level. They will look into your health status to see if you have any health conditions that could prevent you from working and if you have health insurance to cover any medical costs. They will also look at your family status to see what your household size is and the financial status of your household. They will also look at your affidavit of support from your financial sponsor and we'll look into whether you have a close relationship with them, whether you live together, and whether the sponsor has sponsored others previously. Most of this information will be asked for through a new form called the I-944 Declaration of Self-Sufficiency. As you can see, previous use of public benefits is only one factor of many that will be examined by the immigration officials. Now, what public benefits are included in the public charge? There are a set of specific public benefit programs that are included in the public charge. They are federal government cash assistance, such as supplemental security income and temporary assistance for needy families, known as TANF, 
federally paid institutionalized care, such as nursing home or long-term mental health facility paid for by the federal government, state, local, and tribal general assistance, the Supplemental Nutrition and Assistance Program, known as SNAP, EBT, or food stamps, Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program, Section 8 Project-Based Rental Assistance, Section 8 Rehabilitation Program, and other federal housing, and certain non-emergency Medicaid programs, with many exceptions. For example, Medicaid for children under 21, known as All Kids in Illinois, Medicaid for pregnant women, including the 60 days after birth, known as Mom and Babies in Illinois, Emergency Medicaid, and services under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act are not included. What other benefit programs are not included? There are many programs that are not included in the public charge test. Some examples are Emergency Disaster Assistance, All Kids, Moms, moms and Babies, Privately Funded Food Banks, Food Pantries, Meals on Wheels, Summer Meals, Head Start, Healthy Start, tax credits such as the COVID-19 federal stimulus checks, Cook County CareLink program, Pandemic EBT or PEBT, WIC, Pell Grants and Student Aid programs, Homeless and Transitional Housing, school breakfast and lunch programs, vaccines for children program, unemployment benefits, child care assistance, emergency Medicaid, care provided at schools such as school-based health centers and community health centers, and many more. This is not an exhaustive list. There are so many programs that are exempt from the public charge rule. As you can see, the public charge is a lot of information, but it's important to leave with these five takeaways. Use of public benefits by your children or family members will not count in the public charge test. Only the listed public benefits used by the applicant will be counted in the public charge. Not all immigrants are subject to the public charge test. And lastly, speak to an immigration lawyer if you believe you will be subject to the public charge test. There are many resources to find more information and to ask for public charge assistance. The Protecting Immigrant Families Illinois website has Illinois specific public charge information and is regularly updated. The web address is protectingimmigrantfamiliesillinois.org. The Immigrant Family Resource Program works with immigrant families on public benefit applications. IFRP partners are continuously trained on issues such as public charge. To find an IFRP near you, please visit www.icirr.org forward slash IFRP. Families can also call the ICER Immigrant Family Support Hotline if they have any questions or would like more information. The number is 1-855-435-7693. Their hotline is available in multiple languages. Thank you everyone for joining me in this presentation. If you have any questions or would like more information, please email me and or visit the Latino Policy Forum Facebook and Twitter.